Have you ever wondered what happens during a brain hemorrhage? A brain hemorrhage, also known as a cerebral hemorrhage, intracranial hemorrhage, or intracerebral hemorrhage, is a type of stroke characterized by an artery in the brain bursting. This leads to localized bleeding in the surrounding tissues, which, in turn, results in the death of brain cells. In the United States, strokes affect more than 795,000 people each year, with brain hemorrhages accounting for approximately 13% of these cases. In today's video, we will delve into everything you need to know about brain hemorrhages, including their causes, symptoms, prevention strategies, and treatment options. So make sure to watch this video until the very end. By doing so, you'll gain valuable knowledge that could save your life or that of someone you care about from this serious condition. Given the potential for brain hemorrhages to be disabling or even life-threatening, it's crucial to seek medical assistance promptly if you suspect someone is experiencing one. Without further ado, let's get started. What happens during a brain hemorrhage? A brain hemorrhage begins when blood, often due to trauma, leaks and irritates the brain tissues. This irritation leads to swelling, known medically as cerebral edema. Additionally, the escaping blood may accumulate, forming a mass referred to as a hematoma. These conditions increase pressure on the surrounding brain tissue. This heightened pressure disrupts the normal blood flow essential for brain function, ultimately resulting in the death of brain cells. The locations where bleeding can occur vary, including within the brain itself, between the brain and the membranes covering it, among the layers of the brain's membranes, or between the skull and the brain's outer covering. What causes bleeding in the brain? Bleeding in the brain, or brain hemorrhage, can be triggered by several risk factors and underlying causes. Among the most prevalent are head trauma. For individuals younger than 50, head injury stands out as the leading cause of brain bleeding. Such injuries can rupture blood vessels within the brain, leading to immediate and potentially severe hemorrhaging. High blood pressure. Chronic high blood pressure gradually weakens the walls of blood vessels, making them more prone to rupturing. Over time, untreated high blood pressure can significantly elevate the risk of a brain hemorrhage, making it a major preventable cause. Aneurysm. An aneurysm occurs due to a weakened area in a blood vessel wall that bulges and can eventually burst, leading to bleeding in the brain and potentially causing a stroke. Blood vessel abnormalities, arteriovenous malformations. Some individuals have congenital weaknesses in their brain's blood vessels, known as arteriovenous malformations, which may not be discovered until symptoms manifest. Amyloid angiopathy. Common in older adults and those with high blood pressure, this condition involves changes in the blood vessel walls that can lead to numerous small bleeds, potentially culminating in a significant hemorrhage. Blood or bleeding disorders. Conditions like hemophilia and sickle cell anemia reduce blood platelets and impair clotting, increasing the risk of brain hemorrhage. The use of blood thinners also heightens this risk. Liver disease. Liver conditions can lead to a general propensity for increased bleeding, including within the brain. Brain tumors. Individuals with brain tumors may have an elevated risk of experiencing a brain hemorrhage. What are the symptoms of brain hemorrhage? The symptoms of a brain hemorrhage can vary widely, influenced by the bleed's location, severity, and the amount of tissue affected. These symptoms often develop suddenly and may progressively worsen. Recognizing these symptoms is critical, as a brain hemorrhage is a life-threatening condition requiring immediate medical attention. If you or someone you know exhibits any of the following symptoms, call 911 or go to an emergency room immediately. Cognitive and sensory symptoms. A sudden, severe headache. Changes in vision. Difficulty speaking or understanding speech. Difficulty swallowing. Difficulty with writing or reading. An abnormal sense of taste. Loss of consciousness. Motor skills and coordination. Seizures, especially without a previous history. Weakness in an arm or leg. Loss of fine motor skills, such as hand tremors. Loss of coordination or balance. Other symptoms. Nausea or vomiting. 
decreased alertness or lethargy, and tingling or numbness. It's important to remember that many of these symptoms can also be caused by conditions other than brain hemorrhages. However, the sudden onset of any of these symptoms is a strong indicator that immediate medical evaluation is necessary. What are the types of brain bleeds? Brain bleeds, or hemorrhages, can occur within the brain tissue itself or in the spaces outside the brain. These events are classified based on their location relative to the brain and its protective layers. External brain bleeds. Epidural bleed. This type of bleed occurs between the skull and the dura mater, which is the thick outer layer covering the brain. Epidural bleeds are often the result of a head injury, possibly involving a skull fracture, that leads to the tearing of blood vessels under the skull. Without prompt treatment, an epidural bleed can cause significant complications, including increased blood pressure, breathing difficulties, brain damage, or even death. An epidural bleed usually happens due to an injury, often involving a skull fracture, that tears an underlying blood vessel. Subdural hemorrhage. Occurring between the dura mater and the arachnoid membrane, subdural hemorrhages are typically caused by the tearing of bridging veins that traverse the subdural space. These bleeds can develop rapidly, as in acute subdural hemorrhages, often following severe head trauma, or more slowly, as in chronic subdural hemorrhages, which may result from minor head injuries, especially in the elderly. The accumulation of blood in the subdural space can lead to increased intracranial pressure, resulting in brain damage and, without immediate treatment, potentially fatal outcomes. Subarachnoid hemorrhage. This type of bleed occurs in the space between the arachnoid membrane and the pia mater, the innermost layer of the meninges. Subarachnoid hemorrhages are commonly caused by the rupture of an aneurysm, or arteriovenous malformation, AVM, leading to blood spreading into the cerebrospinal fluid that occupies the subarachnoid space. This condition can cause sudden, severe headaches, vomiting, seizures, and can lead to long-term neurological problems or death. Rapid identification and treatment are crucial to manage the immediate dangers and mitigate the risk of further vascular complications, such as vasospasm. Internal brain bleeds. Intracerebral hemorrhage. This type involves bleeding directly within the brain tissue, potentially throughout the cerebrum, cerebellum, or brainstem. Causes range from high blood pressure and trauma to blood vessel abnormalities. The resulting damage from the bleed can lead to cell death, increased intracranial pressure, and significant functional impairments. It's the second most common cause of stroke, as well as the deadliest. Intraventricular hemorrhage. Bleeding occurs within the brain's ventricular system, leading to possible hydrocephalus due to the blockage of cerebrospinal fluid pathways. Common in premature infants, but also affecting adults, it can arise from trauma or accompany intracerebral hemorrhages. Quick medical response is vital to manage the effects and prevent severe outcomes. How is a brain hemorrhage treated? Once you see a healthcare provider, they can determine which part of the brain is affected based on your symptoms. To diagnose a brain hemorrhage, healthcare professionals may utilize several imaging tests, such as a CT scan, which can reveal internal bleeding or blood accumulation, or an MRI. An eye exam, which can show swelling of the optic nerve, may also be performed. A lumbar puncture, spinal tap, is usually not performed, as it may be dangerous and make things worse. Treatment for bleeding in the brain depends on the location, cause, and severity of the hemorrhage. In cases where swelling needs to be reduced or bleeding halted, surgery may be necessary. The specific type of surgery will depend on the hemorrhage's location and cause. A variety of medications may be prescribed to manage the condition and its symptoms. These can include painkillers, corticosteroids, or osmotics to reduce swelling, and anticonvulsants to prevent or control seizures. Can brain hemorrhages be prevented? Brain hemorrhages, while severe, are often associated with specific risk factors, and some preventative measures can significantly reduce the risk. Here's how you can minimize your chances of experiencing a brain hemorrhage. Manage high blood pressure. 
With 80% of cerebral hemorrhage patients having a history of high blood pressure, the most crucial step is to keep it under control. Adopt a healthy lifestyle that includes a balanced diet and regular exercise, and adhere to prescribed medication regimens. Avoid smoking and drug use. Tobacco and illicit drugs, such as cocaine, heighten the risk of a brain hemorrhage. Steering clear of these substances can substantially lower your risk. Practice safe driving. Always use a seatbelt when driving and adhere to safe driving practices to prevent accidents that could lead to head injuries. Wear helmets. For activities like motorcycling, bicycling, or skateboarding, wearing a helmet is essential for protecting your head from injuries that could cause brain hemorrhages. Consider corrective surgery. If you're diagnosed with conditions that increase hemorrhage risk, such as aneurysms, consulting with a medical professional about the possibility of corrective surgery could be a preventive measure. Monitor medication use. If you're on blood thinning medications like warfarin, Coumadin, regular checkups with your doctor are vital to ensure your blood levels remain within a safe range. I hope you liked the video. If so, consider giving it a thumbs up. This topic is of public interest, so share it with your loved ones. If you're new to our channel, don't forget to subscribe to support our growth and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on our next video. We're curious to know, were you aware of the information we shared about brain hemorrhages? Do you have any personal experiences or know someone who has experienced a brain hemorrhage? Share with us in the comments below. Before you leave, you may also find some other helpful videos popping up on your screen right now. Feel free to click on any of them, or even better, watch both to continue your knowledge journey with us. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next video. Take care.